a future episode. Today we'll be discussing a theme of climate education, which is a big problem in many countries, uh, if not all of the countries, as we can still hear in our school sentences such as, I don't know, uh, global warming it has a positive impact because we will minimize the hunger in the world. And that sounds terrifying because climate crisis is the biggest threat to our future right now. So hi, my name is Maria Godzinska. I'm from Fridays for Future Poland. And today my guest is Mary Skudas, active member of UK Student Climate Network and the coordinator of an interesting campaign called Teach the Future. Hi, Mary. Could you tell us a bit more about the campaign and then we will maybe have some questions session? Yeah, awesome. Um, hi, I'm Mary Skudas. I'm a 16-year-old campaign coordinator at Teach the Future. Um, Teach the Future is a climate education campaign aiming to rapidly repurpose the education system centred around the climate crisis. Um, I think I'll just quickly go through why I think our education system is failing us and why it's so important that we need to reform it. Um, I first got into climate education, a bit like Maria said, um, I was talking to some of my friends about what they had learned about the climate crisis and one of them told me that one of the they had been taught one of the benefits of the climate crisis was the fact we could grow more grapes in the UK and that was really good for our economy and another one had been asked to outline the benefits of burning fossil fuels for their homework. I was really frustrated at this and confused and angry how can this climate crisis which is the defining issue of our generation only be outlined in this amount of education that still isn't of good enough quality and are we going to be handed a planet that that is not only completely destroyed but also we have been de denied adequate education on i think it's worth pointing out that this isn't an issue for just a few amount of people a survey by nus suggests that only four percent of students feel like they know enough about the, the climate crisis and no matter what we go on to do in our life the climate crisis will greatly affect every part of that um how we work how we travel how we eat how we live but if only 4% of the future know that, that know what that means and have been equipped with adequate knowledge on that, that's a massive issue. What Teacher Future also focuses on isn't just the curriculum, isn't just the content that we learn, it's also the very way our schools are run. Our education system is based on preparing us for exams, not to become autonomous critical thinkers or global citizens. We're taught to compete with our peers, not to collaborate with them, to find answers. The very point of education is to prepare us for our future. But if our future is this greatly affected by the climate crisis and we're not being taught about it in schools, then what is the point of our current education system? This ultimately led to the um, conclusion that our education system is outdated and is ultimately failing us, um, which is where Teach the Future campaign comes in. Uh, we aim to, as I said, we aim to rapidly reorientate the English education system through three asks, um, one of which is a review um, into how the current English education system is preparing students for what our future is going to be like. And ultimately, I think this will raise some, some questions and some answers that our government will need to respond to through this. The second one is teacher training. We're all very aware that teachers are under such immense pressure, both financially, time and content wise. Um, which is why systemic level change is so important. Three quarters of our teachers don't feel like they have the adequate knowledge and resources to teach the climate crisis, which is a massive failure, failure on the teacher training level. So we aim to incorporate the climate crisis into teacher training and create a new professional qualification on this. Our third one is a bill, the English Climate Emergency Education Act that we have written. Um, it's the first bill ever written by students about their own education, which is really exciting, um, and it aims to allocate funding for both youth environmental action, youth voice, and in order to convert our school systems to net zero. Through all of these, we hope that we can achieve a truly sustainable education system where the climate crisis is at the core of what we do. Um, and I'm super excited to answer any questions, but first I'd love to quickly run through what, what you can do to help if you're sitting here watching this today, what, what can you do to help us get there? Um, first one of which is when the coronavirus starts um, ceasing out a little bit more, contact your MP, tell them this is something you're really 
passionate about tell them this is something that they you want to be seeing in your schools if you're from an organization that would like to support us get in touch with us get in touch and see how we can collaborate what we can do together um, if you have an experience of an education system that isn't in England then we need your valuable insights so we can take this further than just England um, sign up to our mailing list on our website to keep updated but ultimately spread the word because without all of you without this big push we're not going to be able to educate all of the students of tomorrow on on the biggest issue of today thank you uh yeah you spoke about what we can do uh, after the corona crisis is kind of let's say finished but we know it's not going to finish that easily but what right now is teach for future doing like what are your uh, movements right now and what are your actions um so obviously we can't be doing as much as we wanted to be doing we had a meeting with our secretary of state for education and obviously that had to be postponed but it's given us a really valuable time it's given us more time to prepare for cop so hopefully that we can create this network of schools um, and education systems internationally to try and put more pressure on governments leading into cop it's given us great time to to collaborate with more sporting organizations um, and it's given us more time to plan out for the future whilst we're all sat here indoors what can we be doing what can we be planning so that when we come out of this that climate um climate education is at the center of what we um, what what our response to this is okay great and i have also a question for you Right now, you're very active in UK's CN and in Teach for Future. Uh, and I'm curious, what do you think about your future? Maybe do you think you will get involved also like more professionally in changing the climate education in your country or maybe even more internationally? Um, so this is always something I'm... I'm really passionate about but it's not something I ever envisioned doing for my future I'm doing this because I think it needs to be done and if 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 no one else is going to do it then it, it falls to me to do um I I would I all I've always wanted to do something where I feel like I'm making a difference I don't want to be stuck indoors doing something that that doesn't really have any impact um but climate activism has been something that's been really important to me especially over the last few months it's something that really holds holds a community of people together um so it's definitely something that i want to keep continue doing in the future okay um and also i'm kind of curious because you said what we can do maybe more as a, a individual people but i'm curious what would you tell the movements other our fridays for future movements how to start their own campaign in their uh, in their countries what were maybe the biggest obstacles and difficulties um so our campaign started last october so it's still very new but we've gone really far i think the first really important stage was getting a big group of people together and working out where the holes in your current education system are work out what problems in your education system you're trying to address and then work out how you're going to fill those holes. Um, it has been, we've had some obstacles trying to coordinate action with our government. That has been difficult, but um, we do, we've got a fantastic team of people and that has helped us get there. Um, obviously we're now quite an established group. So if Fridays for Future groups feel like this is something that is as important as I think it is, um, in their countries, then um, please do get in touch with us because we've gone through this, um, we've gone through a lot of the, the first processes in our country. So we do have that knowledge and that resources and we would love to um, love to help this go further. Uh, and maybe what is right now like the thing that you're the most proud of during the, like your your involvement in Teach for Future? Um, we held an awesome event in February that I'm really, really proud that we managed to do. Um, it was a parliamentary reception, so an event for parliamentarians in our government. Um, we held it at the end of February and 
we got 70 MPs and peers to come along and they were majority of them were so supportive of what we're doing and it's really opened up that those contacts for us in the future to have all of these MPs behind us supporting what we do um, and it was a lot of work to organize but it, it was a really successful event so I'm really proud of that. Yeah that's great um, yeah uh, <laughs> so do you think uh, you, that the campaign can be more like expanded in other countries? Um, yeah, what, what, what will you do to more like promote it abroad? Yeah, so um, we started in England because in the UK our education systems are devolved. So um, they don't all work together. And that was where we had our, um, most of our volunteers were from England. So that's where we decided to start. We've already started work um, with some people from the Scottish Youth Climate Strikes um, who are really keen to do a similar thing in their country. So they've made a partner organisation to us, um, Teach the Future Scotland, and that's just started, which has been super exciting. And we do really hope to expand both throughout the UK and throughout the world. Um, but ultimately, it can't come from me. I can't try and... I can't try and um, do someone else's education system. It's got to come from people within their country, which is why we can create an awesome network. If we get lots of people from different countries that think this is super important, then we can make that network and it can go international, but obviously without, without other countries' help, then it's gonna stay where it is at the moment. Uh, I have also a question about your idea of the, let's say, new curriculum, because I guess climate crisis is such an important issue that it shouldn't be present only on the specific one subject. Uh, it should kind of be present in all the subjects that there are. And so what are your ideas and where you, sh you see the biggest like point where we can really emphasize the importance of the climate education? Yeah, so a question we get a lot is why do we need to do this? Because um, we already touched on climate crisis in geography and science. And actually, that's something that our campaign is focusing not to not to um, just keep it in that, because if we only keep it in geography and science, it's seen as only an issue for people that are geographers or people that are scientists, when in fact, this is going to affect everyone and everyone, no matter if you're going to become a farmer or a pharmacist, you're going to have to have that knowledge that you're going to have to apply to your job, whatever that may be. Um, so it is about... Um, weaving climate education through all of the different subjects like a golden thread so it touches in all of the subjects about um what what how that subject will be affected or how the climate crisis conversation will be in those in those topics and what do you think that is the best way to teach climate education at schools <laughs> Uh, the best way to teach climate education. I think this is why teacher training is so important. Um, we can't teach climate education if our teachers don't feel adequately prepared. So a massive step of it is getting those teachers inspired and educated themselves on it. And then if you recreate an atmosphere in the classroom where everyone knows this is important and it's taught in a really inspiring and forward thinking way, then um, I think that's the way that we can really inspire a generation that will make a change. Yeah, and that's very important. And maybe how can we show the government and why should the government see and think that climate education is a like, very important thing in our curriculum? Yeah, so um, I think it's important to remember that we are the generation that are inheriting our planet. And if we're not given the tools to mitigate the effects of the climate crisis and um, face the consequences it's going to give us, then we, as the next generation, aren't going to be adequately equipped to deal with this problem that they're passing on to us. If we don't teach the future generations about it, then how are they going to live in our planet? It's as simple as that. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, and maybe more like my, my personal question, let's say. Uh, I'm very curious 
if you are also thinking about uh, pushing the climate education about more psychological impact of climate crisis, because as we know, the problem of climate depression is growing. And yeah, I'm curious, what do you think about this, putting this into also educational part of everything? Especially from a teacher training point of view, that's really important that teachers know how to deal with climate anxiety for their students. Um, but it's also important that the students themselves know that this might be something that they encounter. And this is actually not a bad thing. This is what it is. This is how you can deal with it. It's the same as any mental health. It's just slightly different. And we're taught about other, other mental health issues. So why shouldn't we be taught about this one? I think it's also important to note that um, if we're not taught about the climate crisis, climate anxiety can get much worse. This whole kind of not talking about it, not seeing it anywhere is one of the biggest causes of climate anxiety. But actually, if it's a conversation that's actively being had, like this is what's happening, but this is what people are doing to help, this is what you can do to help and being inspired with that action, then that's really one of the most effective ways to fight climate anxiety. Yeah, that's, I com again completely agree. Uh, and how do you see like, like when you're talking to your friends and people around you, do you feel like they also understand the importance of climate education? Or maybe can you see some negative aspects of what we are taught in schools? Like, I don't know, how, how the people are, uh, let's say, yeah, how, what do they know around you? Yeah, so um, my closest friends have all been very supportive of me um, within the climate movement, so they are quite involved in it as well. But people in my class have such varying degrees of knowledge on it. Some people know that the climate crisis is a thing, but wouldn't be able to tell you anything about it. And that's really scary for me, the fact that this is going to be such such a big thing and it already is impacting so many people and us at home as well but they don't see it and they don't know anything about it and they don't know how to to combat that and that really scares me um there is obviously there are students um like myself and you that know obviously quite a lot about this but i think you probably agree with me that you weren't taught about that at schools um and it is about no matter what your access to resources are no matter if you've got time or if you've got access to learning about this that everyone has the opportunity an equal opportunity to learn about this thank you yeah we have a question from our youtube channel if the education system is not really encouraging critical thought on the climate crisis at the moment then which sources did you use to become aware of this issue yeah so um I became aware um, thoroughly about the climate crisis through um, in-depth research um, on the news, on um, connecting with networks such as the UK Student Climate Network. Um, uh, and without that, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to talk this um, eloquently about it. I wouldn't be able to tell you about why this is an important thing. Um, Obviously, there are sources out there. It's really obvious that um, from the climate activists today that if you look hard enough, if you try hard enough, if you put all of that effort in, you can very slowly start to learn more and more about it. But it, that doesn't mean that that's how everyone should do it. As I said before, not everyone has the resources, not everyone has the um, access to, to how to learn about this. And that's, that's a massive equality issue. We need to... Um, make sure that everyone, no matter what background they come from, know enough about this and um, and are able to learn about it. Yeah, so thank you very much. It was, I think, very interesting talk today. I'm actually going to tell my uh, colleagues from Praise for Future Poland to get in touch with you about climate education, definitely. And thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. It was very nice. And I guess see you next week. Thank you.